Hey family, this is Sarah Jakes Robertson. I am so excited about the incredible word that you're about to receive. There are just a few things I want to tell you before we dig into the word. Number one, let's make this thing official. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. You're already plugged in. Make sure you don't miss anything that comes out of this house. The second thing, did you know that it's more than just videos? We are doing so much to help the community and we want you to partner with us in literally changing the world. Give into this ministry so the fruit of it is incredible. The instructions are on the screen. Make sure that you are a part of what God is doing through One Online. Lastly, my husband's book, Balance, is coming out, and I am so excited. And I got a gift for you. You will get the first three chapters of the book by going to the link below when you pre-order. Pre-order the book. You don't want to miss it. It has tremendously blessed my life, and I can't wait for you to see what I've already partaken in. Balance is going to rock this world. Okay, let's get into the word. Psalm 37, beginning at verse 23, we'll read verse 23 to 25, ties in very well with the song. It says, the steps of a good man, better translation, valiant person, strong person, the steps of a valiant person are ordered by the Lord and he, the Lord, delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not utterly be cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. I have been young, and now I am old. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants begging bread. The steps of a good man are ordered, are ordered, are set up, are erected, are established. Steps of a good man are established. They're established. It's already done. They are established. They are set up. They are established. The steps, the going forth, the going forth of a good man person, a valiant person, the going forth of a valiant person, the going forth, the steps, each and every step that creates their going forth has already been settled. They are established. They are set up. I'll tell your neighbor, it's already done. It's already done. It's already done. Father, we thank you so much for this word. It is a lamp unto our feet, and it is a light unto our path. And God, I sense that you desire to do a number of amazing and beautiful things in our lives today. But one thing I am convinced you are after is a conviction within us that believes and receives and lives in the conscious reality that it is already done. So my prayer, if you don't do anything else, my prayer is that you would set us free to the next degree based on our spiritual comprehension of the victory that we possess. Not a victory that we're trying to gain, but a victory that was procured in Christ meaning that once we got Christ, we got it. And Father, may the evidence of that be the eradication of anxiety. Oh, hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. May the evidence of that be a shoring up of ourselves from the inside out that would cause us to no longer receive what is beneath us that desperation would disappear. Oh, hallelujah. And that we would only receive high things, lofty things, things that are worth who you've called and created us to be. Father, may this revelation be so strong that we would untether ourselves from everything that is connected to a lesser version of ourselves. Oh, yeah, God. Yeah, that, that, that the, 
the revelation would be so profound and so striking in our hearts and minds that it would immediately reveal to us everything that you did not build that's in our lives, even walls of protection that are no longer necessary because you've got us covered. And so, God, what I'm asking for is transformation, that we would leave out of here a little higher than we were upon going in. Ah, a little more sure, a little more victory, a little more clarity. And I pray, God, even in the midst, God, that dreams would begin to come back, that you would put, a, put an I can do in our spirits. Yeah, that we would have a fresh, brand new, yes, I can, <laughs> in our spirits. Since it's already done, we might as well go for it. Do that. Heal us. Bless us. Encourage us. Edify us. Empower us. Strengthen us. Elevate us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Do me a favor. If you agree, just put your hands together. Celebrate God and honor the person next to you as you take your seat. Hallelujah. Already done. Already done. Hallelujah. Oof, already done. Hmm. Well, here on February 16th, 2020, I want to officially welcome you to 2020. Now, that may seem a little strange. Uh, aren't you about a month and a half too late? No. Because I believe that the reality of 2020 is just now truly beginning to be realized. Because you know how it is. We step into a new year, and we have our plan, and we have our strategy, and we have our sense of how things should go. And then we step in bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, and everything is wonderful. Uh, and then typically we realize that most of the time it's actually a little more difficult than we thought. I was talking to a friend of mine. I, I just was thinking he's a championship boxer, and I, I called him up because I felt like February, like this moment, this time, I just felt like there was some sort of connection between the second round of a 12-round bout and the second month in a new year. And I called him. I'm like, hey, man, um, I got a question for you. I don't know much about boxing or whatever, but tell me, what, what is the second round like? Describe to me the second round. And he was like, well, you know, in, in the second round, you, you have to typically make some adjustments, and you have to reassess your strategy because you came into the ring with one strategy based on you studying your opponent and studying the way that they move and, and all sorts of boxing uh, uh, thoughts and boxing uh, strategies that I don't know anything about. He said, and you study that, and then, but once you get in the ring, that's where it goes from con conceptualization to realization. Because this is what I thought, but actually, this boy is hitting a lot harder. <laughs> or this gal is hitting a lot harder than I thought. Or they're a little faster than I thought. You know, they, they, they gained a little bit. I guess they train well and they're lighter and they're hitting harder. And so in the second round is when you, you have to kind of reassess and you have to, to maybe change your strategy a little bit. And I feel like that's, that's where we are as we're dealing with the reality of 2020. See, there's one thing. The concept of 2020 is oftentimes different than the reality of 2020. And I don't know, is it just me or did January feel like it was like... 79 days long, it just, it, it, like, it like felt like at least six months. Are you, I mean, it, it was just this, I'm like, this is just January. And so that helped me to, to understand that we have our strategy and what we think, and then there is an actual strategy, right? And, and the actual strategy is God's strategy. And when we look at the text, we're going to see that, that our life is a strategy. 
Like everything about our life right now is a strategy, and I talk about it all the time. In Jeremiah chapter 1, God says, before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. And, and me knowing you is why I formed you, which meant that the only reason why you were formed was because of God's strategy. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there, there's, a, there's a strategy. And, and for your life, your life is a, it's, there's a strategy to your life. It is not random. It is not let's just navigate life and let's just see what happens. That's not it. No, there literally is a strategy for your life, a calculated strategy. And there are not three strategies for your life. There are not three. There's one strategy for your life. Because before you got here, God already saw the steps that he ordained for you to take, the steps that he ordained. There are certain things that God has ordained for your life, and you have to get to it as quickly as possible because when you get to walking in what God has ordained, there is no failure. Oh. I didn't say that there are no disappointments. We're going to talk about that. But there is no failure. When you begin to align with what God, with the strategy of God concerning you, there is nothing that will be able to stop you. The only thing that will be able to stop you is you. Are you tracking with me? So when I look at, when I look at this text, it further underscores the fact that, that, that my life is a strategy. And, and so it says, it says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. That word ordered is an interesting word because it literally means to be set up, right? To be set up, to be erected. God, my steps, God, my, my life is not random. My path is not random. My steps have been set up already. I feel that. You have already been set up. And, and this cures me from wondering if I'm going to be okay. This cures me from wondering if God has a path of success and significance for me. It cures me from that because he says right there, God has already, he has already ordered your steps. They are set up. They are erect. They are there. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And then I looked at this, this, the second part of that verse, and it says, and he, meaning God, delights in his way or he delights in this path that he has set up <laughs> i say this better so 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 your life your steps the steps of a valiant person a strong person and i'm going to talk about why that's significant in a second but those steps have already been set up been been set up right and then it says and god delights in that path so Regardless of how you feel about that path, God delights in that path. But, if, but, but a closer look at that word delight is interesting. A closer look at, look at that word delight means, if you study it, it means to incline to or to bend toward. And I'm like, God, help me understand the significance of that. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and God is inclined to and is bent toward that path. And then that, that hit me. That, that means that, that the presence of God and the power of God and the favor of God and the resources of God are all bent and slanted towards these ordered steps. If you're taking notes, write this down. Write this down. Write this down. And they'll put it up there. The power, the favor, and the resources of God are bent toward the path that he has set up for you. So all of heaven's resources, feel it, the favor. If you're wondering where favor is, favor is on the path. If you're wondering where resources are, I feel it right there. It is on the path. Some of you are trying to get stuff done, and you're wondering why you don't possess what you need, and it could be that you don't possess what you need because you are stepping out of order. You're stepping out of turn. You are not stepping into ordered steps. Because he is inclined. God, God will not anoint what is not ordained. Oh, let me take my time. Right, right up in here. Right up in here. Right up in here. In other words, there is a path that is anointed. There is a path that is full of favor. There is a path that resources are already assigned to. Relationships, finances, wisdom, insight, open doors, yeses. There is a path. 
And God will not bend towards a path that is not you. And so sometimes what we try to do is we say, God, I want this. And God, will you please bend towards where I'm at? And God says, I can't because I'm only bent towards what I've already blessed. Are you tracking with me? And that's why it is not wise to ask God to bless what you're doing. You have to learn to do what God is blessing. Oh, you, 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 you. Because God right now concerning your life, I feel the Lord, he is already bent and inclined towards something concerning your life. <laughs> that there is something concerning your life right now that God has already anointed. That you don't even have to pray about. You don't even have to ask God to do it. It's already blessed. It will already work. It is already settled and it's already done. There is something See, in ordered steps, order, that's why I have to get to my ordered steps. I have to find out what my ordered steps are. I have to find the steps of a good man are ordered for the Lord. I've got to stop walking and recalibrate myself and reassess my strategy because if it's not working, it is possible that I'm not where God wants me. Or I am not positioned properly in the place that God wants me to be. Oh, I can tell, I can tell. it's going to be one of them days. I can tell. I can tell. Yeah, he's bent. God, God is slanted. God is biased. He's not biased against you. He's biased for you. He's leaning towards something. So we have to, we have to become skilled at perceiving where God is leaning. I, I've, got to get, I've got to get better at sensing Where God is, I, I, I allow, I'll tell you right now, I allow the presence of God to help me. I, I walk by faith and not by sight. I can't trust sight. Sight is tricky because sight is all based on temporary. And because I am natural and I'm carnal, I personally am inclined towards carnal or temporary things. So I have to get to this place where I don't trust my eyes, I trust the presence. Where is the presence blowing, right? It may not make sense. It doesn't seem like there's anything over there, but I feel the presence of God over there. And so I begin to incline my feet to the place where the presence is. Can I talk to you like this? Because God is slanted towards what he has anointed. He's inclined. Let, let's keep reading here, though. Let's keep reading. And so it says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. But then this verse starts getting a little confusing. It gets confusing because after that, it says, though he fall. So, so, hold on, I'm confused, I'm confused. Because it just said, it just talked about the steps being ordered, right? The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Woo! God is ordering my steps. He has already gone ahead of me. It's already done. It's already done. Hallelujah. It's already done. It's already done. And he delights in the way, and God is excited about the path that I'm on. Surely this is good, but then this confusing thing shows up. And it says, though he fall. That's, is this verse out of place? How can my steps be ordered by the Lord, and yet I still fall? How, how can my steps be ordered by the Lord, and yet I experience disappointment. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. It appears that something's wrong. How can that be? How can God be the one ordering my steps? But I end up with a broken heart. How, how can God be ordering my steps and I don't get the job? Even though I pray and I have all my praying people praying. Come on, somebody. I just need you, need you to believe me with me for this. I'm claiming it. I'm claiming it. You've been there. I'm claiming it in Jesus' name. I'm claiming it. I sound like my dear, huh? I'm claiming it. I'm claiming it. <laughs> How can I claim it? And it doesn't come through. 
How can I walk with God and experience this appointment at the same time? I don't get it. How? How, how, how? This is confusing. And one of the things that I believe God spoke to me is that, that some failure is ordained. Now, that doesn't feel, that's not sexy church at all. That is the most unsexy thing you've ever heard in church before. Yeah. Some failure is ordained. Watch this. Some no's are ordained. You don't like that. I know, I know, I know. Some no's are ordained. Listen, it's interesting. We love the God who opens doors, but we are suspicious of the one who closes them. When the very passage that says that he opens doors also in that same verse says he also closes doors. He opens doors that no man can shut, and he shuts doors that no man can open. And one of the things that I've learned, if you take your notes, write this down. You're not qualified by how well you win, but how well you lose. Oh, you got to catch that. Anybody can win well. Anybody can have victory over victory over victory, and, and, and it seemed like they're the strongest and most optimistic person on the planet. But how well do you lose? What, what do you do? What do you do? I know you're good at winning, but are you good at losing? Because in the order steps of God, there are seasons where both are there. I have to fall. There's something developmental about the way you reemerge from a fall that has everything to do with you being shaped into the valiant person who these steps are ordered for. Can I illustrate it really quickly? Raise your hand if, if you, you, you like burpees. You, you, you know what a burpee is. Raise your hand. Yeah. I have a love-hate relationship. I have a love-hate relationship with burpees. But, but, but I think that, that, that burpees, the burpee is a perfect example of what I'm talking about as it relates to the development that can only come to you from a fall. I feel the Holy Spirit. There are certain places that God is taking you to that necessitate the type of development that does not come to you when things are going well. I'm talking about the type of development that comes to you when you fall flat on your face, but somehow you find a resolve on the inside of you that allows you to get back up. And when you think about the burpee, the burpee wouldn't be a burpee without a fall. I'm about to show you right now. In fact, I'm going to have him show you. Come here. Come up here real fast. Let's give it up for Derek. Derek, can you show us, can you demonstrate us how, how falling is the easy part in the burpee, but the real, but the real development is when you get back. Can you show us real quick, please? Uh. Oh, 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 oh. Do, do it again, do it again, do it. So I have to fall in order to get back up, and I, do, do it again, come on, come on. I have to fall in order to get back up. Now my abs are getting tight, my core is getting tight, my legs are getting tight, my life is getting tight, my hops are coming together, I can leap higher than I can leap. Come on, somebody, though I fall, There are some things, some dimensions that you can't even live in without the development that comes after a fall. Is there anybody in here and you have gone through a fall and somehow you found it within you to get back up? And when you came up, you didn't come up the same. You were stronger. You were developed. Come on and shout if that's you. You needed to fall. I know it didn't feel good, but another you emerged. If everything would have gone the way that you, wouldn't, that you wanted them to go, you wouldn't be who you are. You would be a lightweight. 
Let me tell you something. One of the things that I've learned about life, life is fair. Because it only throws heavy blows at heavy weights. Are you tracking with me? It only throws heavy blows at heavy weights. And there's some people in here right now, and you have been disappointed, but I'm telling you, even that disappointment is going to work together for your good. I see you getting stronger. I see you getting wiser. I see you getting more solid. I see you. Your steps. And see, oftentimes what happens is when you... When you experience a disappointment, it makes you feel like you miss God. You didn't miss God. Sometimes you walk right into God. You walk right into God. It says, though he fall, though he fall, watch this. Yeah, you're in my ordered steps. And sometimes my ordered step will lead you into a fall. But guess what? It's not the type of fall you think. It's not the type of fall that casts you utterly down. Because even when you fell, I was upholding you. I was propping you up. I was propping you up. I hear God saying, you thought that you fell. You thought that when you fell, I abandoned you or abandoned you. Or you thought that you fell because I abandoned you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Even when you fall, I've got you in my hands because the same hand that allowed you to fall is the same hand that's going to lift you up, that's going to put you in your seat, that's going to put you in your high place. And here is the thing. Here is the thing. You can't let disappointment kill you. I've learned something about God. You're not qualified by how well you win. That's not true. Even Jesus had to fall to rise. Did you hear what I just said? Even Jesus had to fall to rise. There are like my shop. For some of you, there are some dimensions that the only way up to is down. And I don't want you to think, there's some of you, and you think you've been demoted. You haven't been demoted. You've been set up. You've been set up. You've been set up for your step up. There's some, there's some barriers to dimensions that you cannot just walk through. You have to be pulled back like a slingshot to produce the type of velocity on the inside of you to bring you with force to shatter something. I feel that. You have to be wound back sometimes because there's some barriers you can't walk through. Some you gotta, you gotta shatter. You gotta burst through. Baal Perazim, the God who bursts through. There's certain things you gotta burst through. And you can't be, watch this, a full-time winner. You need some scars. I don't even trust people that haven't been through anything because, because, because you, you say you'll be there, but have you been through the fire? You've been through the fire. I love everybody. I need somebody with some scars. I, I need to know you've been through something. Everything's good. Why everything's good? But, but what are you going to do, Peter, when things get... Things get rough. Peter, oh, Jesus, I'll go with you to the end, Jesus. <laughs> Telling you, ride or die, Jesus. Yeah, Jesus tatted on him. <laughs> for life, Jesus. Jesus. And the number three for three days, Jesus. <laughs> JC, three for life, baby. <laughs> and that heat got turned up. And all you saw was his elbows. Now, God is, God is producing something. And, and I, I want to I wanna, I wanna, I wanna heal something. We're going to move on. We've got a little bit more to talk about. Than but I want to heal something because sometimes we, we misprocess pain. And the worst type of pain that you can experience is pain that comes to you in a season where you were doing all that you knew to do. 
You gave your all to the relationship. You gave your all to the career. You gave your all to the job. You gave your all to the ministry. You gave your all. You gave your all. You gave all of yourself to it. And then you got hurt because the logical mind says, if I give my all to this good thing, then there's no way in the world I should get hurt. And that's not what Psalm 37 says. Psalm 37 says, even when I'm ordering your steps, you will fall. But you won't be utterly cast down. Because the guarantee is that I'm holding you even when you fall because I am developing you. I, I need you to be the type of person that can be disappointed but not stop believing. That your disappointment doesn't turn into disbelief. I still need you to be on fire. I need you to shake it off. Yes, it hurt. Yes, cry. Yes, pray. Shake it off and get on fire again. Get on fire again. I need you hot at all times. And so, I believe that, and I got to say this, and this is just my testimony, and I'll just, I'll tell you straight out. There has never been a disappointment that I've experienced in my life that did not catapult me into another stratosphere of grace, anointing, and progress. I, I can think of some, woo, some doozy seasons where I was like, God, this is unfair. I'm your dude. I got JC3 on my <laughs> No, I'm like, God, I'm your guy. I'm your dude, man. I laid it all down. I left corporate America. I did, every, I, laid, I did exactly what you told me to do. And yet here I am, disappointed, hurt, upset. What part of the game is this? And somehow, some way, God had just this little lifeline. Sometimes that's all it is. Some of you are getting a lifeline right now. But it was just this little lifeline, and it was God's still, small voice, this little lifeline. And I held on to that lifeline through the dark. See, sometimes it's not going to be bright, but you got to keep on walking. Because he didn't say the steps of a good man are always bright steps. He just said that they're ordered, right? But he also said in another place, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will feel no evil. For you are with me, I will walk through it. There's nothing that I faced painful, physically, emotionally, spiritually, that didn't set me up for greater things later. Not a one thing. I can count each one. And so we get to this place where we can accept disappointment as long as we know there's a strategy. I can, I can, I can. I think that there's some in this room, and, and you're going to have to you have to tell your disappointment, but yeah, there was a strategy, though. Even, even in my pain, there's a strategy. Now, now David, um, he is asking a lot of us. He's preaching to us. He's basically telling us the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. He's telling us that the ordered steps that we need to pursue, we need to walk in, right? In other words, you need to abandon how you want to do life. And really pursue God and the steps that have already been curated for you, steps that have been ordered for you, right? That's a tall order. And if that order wasn't tall enough, then he says, and oh, by the way, you're going to fall. Even with ordered steps, you're going to fall. I think David realized that, that, that what he was asking through this song, asking of us, even asking of us today, he knew somebody would be reading this thousands of years later. Because let's just be honest. Can I have a real moment with you? Let's, let's just be honest. I came here to ask you to surrender to God's ordered steps for your life. Now, I realize that that is a good hallelujah thing to say in church. But in actuality in your life, that is a tall order. Because you already got your thing going. Hello, somebody. You had your thing going when you walked in here. And you're going to have your thing going when you leave out of here. You didn't come in here planning on potentially suspending your thing, whatever your thing is. Can we have a real conversation here? You, you didn't come in here and say, my life before this moment, I am ending. And I'm going to walk into this building and whatever the Lord tells me to pick up, even if it's my cross and to follow him, that's what I'm doing. You didn't walk in here with that. 
You say, I'm going to set my thing down for a minute. And I'm going to go up in here and worship Jesus for a minute. And my thing's going to be waiting on me. <laughs> you don't have to amen. I already know. You got plans. I'm not saying they're bad plans. I'm just talking about your own thing. I'm not even saying that they're negative necessarily. I'm just talking about our own thing. So, so, so this is a tall order. I came here straight out to challenge you, to call you, to surrender in such a way where you're willing to only do God's thing for you. That's a tall order. That's a tall order. Huh? I realize that. I think David knew I was preaching this. And not only that, but also, oh, and by the way, while you're doing that, you're going to fall. You're going to have to do some burpees. That's a tall order. But David seems to want to soften that, that blow a little bit in what he says in this last verse. So he says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. He says, though he fall, he should not utterly be cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. And then he goes into, he's selling now. And he says, I have been young, and now I'm old. And I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor see begging bread. Now, David is qualified. He's qualified to get our attention and to speak to us like this because he has been through so much in his life. David started out as completely rejected. Saul came to anoint the king. The king was in Jesse's house. And, David, and, and Jesse brought out everybody except David. That's rejection. He experienced rejection. He experienced being overlooked. He was out cleaning the sheep, dealing with the sheep, right? He goes from that. God anoints him. He goes from that. He fights a lion. He fights a bear. Then he has to fight Goliath, right? So watch this. You talk about disappointments, so David, watch this, David gets anointed, and the prophet says, you are king over Israel. The next thing you know, he is running from Saul, and he is out in the wilderness. His life looks nothing like what was promised to him. He knew all about disappointment. But at least during those years of, of, of waiting on God, so to speak, he had this guy named Samuel, who was a prophet, to encourage him. But then guess what? Samuel dies on him. So, so the only point of reference for all the prophecy has now died. So he's running from Saul. He's hungry. His men are tired. He's got a few hundred people who have made him king. They find themselves in a bad way. Then the prophet Samuel dies on him, and he has to, to find it within himself to continue on because there's a promise over his life. Well, we know things get better, right? Ultimately, Saul dies, David gets the kingdom, everything is good for a minute until mm, he sees this gal named Bathsheba. And he falls. And he ultimately, you know the story, read it when you get a chance. It's an incredible, well, call it incredible. It's an interesting story. It's like Greenleaf. It just it plays out like Greenleaf, you know. <laughs> we love Greenleaf. God bless Oprah and everybody. Mwah, we love them so much. But it's scandalous. And somebody gets killed. And then he, he gets Bathsheba pregnant. And, and then they lose the baby. And, and then, then, then he gets past that. God has mercy on him. But then his own son tries to kill him and tries to take the kingdom from him. And then his armor bearer of years and years tries to kill him and tries to take over the kingdom. And he goes through ups and downs and ups and downs and ups and downs, and he dies in good old age. He's qualified. He has seen so much in life, but he says, I've been young, but now I'm old. And I have seen a lot of things in life. You name it, I have seen it. I have seen scandal after scandal. I've seen battle after battle. I've seen confusing things. I've seen crazy things. I've been disappointed. I have been hurt. But one thing I've never seen is the righteous forsaken. Who is the righteous in this context? It's the one who aligns themselves with their ordered steps. He is trying to affirm you and I in this moment of two things. One, 
is that if you walk, if you pay the price to walk in ordered steps, you pay the price to walk in ordered steps, God will never forsake you. You will never regret it. You will come out on top. That's what he's saying. One, pay the price of ordered steps. What is the price? What is the price? What does that look like? Okay, pastor, that's all spiritual. But what, is, what does that look like? Ordered steps. How do I pay the price of ordered steps? How do I get my, my, my steps? How do I align my steps? One of the things that God spoke to me is, in order to, to walk in ordered steps, you have to pursue God. You have to ask God. See, the first step is pursuit. The first step in ordered steps is to step to God in pursuit and to begin to inquire, to ask God, what is the choreography of my life? Now, one of the things that God showed me is that most people ask God like this. God, show me which way to go. <laughs> Did you catch it? You catch it? This, this is how most of us ask God. God, show me the path I need to walk in. What's, what's, what's wrong with this picture? God, show me where I need to walk. Show me what path I need to walk in. Show me what, what, show me, God, show, I need you to show me. I need you to show me. Come on, God, show me. And we're wondering why God doesn't show us. He can't show you. You're moving all over the place. God, show me, right? Because you're already in your rhythm. You're already in your rhythm. You're already, like I talked about, doing your thing. God, please show me. God, reveal to me your will for me, God. Show me which direction. And some of you be running. God, show me which direction you want me to walk in. Lord, Jesus, show me. And God says nothing. You know why? Because you're already doing your thing. The way that you get aligned with ordered steps is you stop. Mm. Watch this. You stop and you suspend your allegiance. To your current rhythm. Oh, 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 I'm about to drive down your street. I'm almost done. In order to be positioned and sensitive and still enough to even hear the instructions for ordered steps, you have to stop and be completely submitted to the rhythm and the choreography of God. That's the hardest part. You have to say, I know that I've got this going on, but right now I'm being still because yesterday's choreography may not get me where God's trying to take me today. You got to stop. Yeah, stop. Some can't hear because you're not still. The sound of the rhythm of you doing what you want to do is bleeding into God's voice and God will never compete with your will he'll never compete the instruction of ordered steps are for those who value the voice of God so he wants to do two things he wants to encourage you in that there is no one who has ever dove into this ordered step lifestyle that has ever been forsaken. They've always come out on top. And then he says something that's also very interesting. He says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor their seed begging bread. And I thought that was interesting. Why do we go to begging bread? How do we get into a conversation about provision? And one of the things that, that the Lord spoke to me is that one of the greatest lies that your enemy stirs up within you is he stirs up fear by suggesting that walking with God will make you poor. Oh, let me talk for a minute. This is my last point. We're done. He, he, he paints the picture that says that if you do it God's way, you're going to lack, watch this, you're going to lack acceptance. Potentially, you're going to lack love relationships, community, and even money. There are people right now who love God, 
but will not walk with God because they feel like walking in another way will make them more money. They feel like it will be a downgrade. I feel that for somebody. And so they compromise who they truly are because they don't believe that walking with God will pay off. Because I see everybody else, and they're not walking with God, and they are rich. And I want to be rich. We laugh, but I'm telling you, I, I know I have friends. So, which is a lie, actually. Oh, I feel the Holy Spirit. It is a lie, and particularly in our town, in our industry, it is one of the biggest lies. It says if you even mention God, you will be poor. You will be poor in opportunities. You'll be poor in relationships, and you will be poor. Listen, it's, it's almost like saying there's no money in God. Look how crazy that sounds. When the word says in Proverbs 10, that the blessing of the Lord, it makes rich. And he has no sorrow with it, but perception is reality. And so what happens is, you can quiet now, but what happens is you have a whole industry of people that are marching to the rhythm of a lie. I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor their seed begging bread. So he's saying, I understand in 2020 that your struggle, Mr. Talented, Mrs. Talented, talented person, that your struggle is going to be, one of your struggles is going to be, one of the things that's going to keep you from really diving into God and walking in ordered steps is you're going to think that there's no profit in being my prophet. That there's no, that, that, that it's not profitable. And, and you start thinking about how am I going to eat? I feel, I'm talking to somebody in here today. There's some people right now in this room watching via live stream, scared to go all the way in. Because they feel like if I go all the way in, I will lose opportunity. And that is a lie straight out of the pit of hell and I feel like God wants to break something in this room right now because your next and your provision and heaven's resources are tied into you walking in your ordered steps I think I want to lay into that right now I think I want to lay into that right now because I feel it so, I feel that really, really strong in this room. There's some people right now and you have been, you've been in this, this wrestling match because God has been tugging at your heart, but every time, but you're afraid to really yield to God because you feel like if you yield to God, then, then what are these people going to think or how is this money going to come or how is this deal going to work out and is God going to want me to, to write some Christian music or, or write a Christian film or something like that and oh God forbid you ever do something like that it is crazy and I hear God saying I need you to trust me I gave you gifts I gave you talents and I've got opportunities I've got ordered steps there are businesses that will bless you that I will erect in media in technology in finances in real estate nobody's serving me begs for bread oh something is about to happen something is about to happen in here right now I'm talking to somebody right now. Somebody is conflicted right now. Somebody drank the Kool-Aid. Somebody believed the lie. Somebody is afraid. I hear God saying, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. You be my servant. I will open doors for you that no man can shut. Oh, I got to work it. I feel it right here. This is what I came to. This is what I came to. This is what I came for. I want everybody to stand up real quick. Don't you leave. Don't you leave. I'm coming for you. I'm about to break something off of your life right now. I'm about to break something off of your life right now. And God's going to open doors for you. I'm going to break something off of you. Fear never profits you. It is false evidence appearing real. 
And God has been pushing you. There's some in this room right now, and God has been pushing you. He's been pushing you. He's trying to push you into your purpose. He's trying to push you into your calling. But you're, you're a little bit afraid because you've never been there before, and you've never seen it before, and you've never seen. You can't see how you will prosper. But I hear God saying, I will create ways. I will make ways out of no way. This is the thing I'll do for my child. If you're here. I'm after you, I'm after you, I'm after you, I'm after you. I'm after you, I'm after you. I'm after you. I'm after you. I'm gonna get to everybody, but 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 this but this group of people, you're in a battle because you have pursued something, but you are you sense that you're losing yourself in the pursuit of it. So on the one hand, it seems to be going well. Your, your, your career is doing this, but your life is doing that. Get down here, get down here, get down here. You, you, you're, you're, there's a part of you, your, your career is doing this, but your life, your life, and nobody knows, and, and everybody around you, watch this, everybody around you is cheering you, but you're not cheering you. And, and what I'm inviting you to are your ordered steps because this is a moment I'm telling you this is a moment I see it I've been pastoring in this town for 15 years and I've seen people come and I've seen people go and I've seen people take off like stars and fall like stars I've seen people do it the right way by ordered steps, and maybe it didn't happen overnight. See, that's the issue. The reason why God's strategy is always better than our strategy is because our strategy is not patient. Order steps takes time. Sometimes you got to stay on one step for three years. Because there's something that is being developed by you learning how to stay a place and be planted in a place and not move. It seems like nothing is happening, but something is happening. Discipline is being developed. Oh, God, I feel it. I'm talking to a lot of people right now. And here is the struggle. Man, if I really, watch this, am true to the God in me, how am I going to eat? So you mean to tell me that the God who knew you before he put you in your mother's womb won't feed you, won't take care of you, won't bless you, won't prosper you? Could it be that you actually are getting less than what you could get. Because the devil is not a generous devil. He just gives you enough to keep you on the hook. He ain't no generous devil. He's not an abundant devil. Just give me a minute, guys. Give me a minute. This, 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 is, this, is, this is why we're here. And I see people come, people go. I've seen people walk away from God, like the rich young ruler. In Scripture, you got to study when you get a chance. Check it out. The rich young ruler, he went to Jesus all self-righteous and everything, and he was like, what do I have to do to gain eternal life? Jesus looked at him and said, you know, I need to keep the commandments. Da -da 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 -da. He was kind of toying with him. He said, yeah, I've done all that. And he's getting ready to walk away, justify it, right? Jesus like, hold up, dude. One more thing. He said, I need you to sell everything you have. Give to the poor and come with me. And here's the crazy thing. The crazy thing is the rich young ruler went away, but he didn't just go away. The scripture says he went away sad because he 
He took the money, but left a piece of himself right there at the moment of decision. And then later on in the text, it gets better. Peter kind of got freaked out a little bit. Peter was like, hey, I left everything to follow you. We good? <laughs> All right? This is going to pay off, right? And Jesus said, Peter, he says, there is no one who has left houses and lands and this and that who will not receive, watch this, a hundredfold. <laughs> Everything they gave up. Watch this. You're saying, oh, he must be talking about when we get to heaven. He said, no, he specified it. He said, we'll receive a hundredfold now in this time. I don't know who in the world I'm talking to. There are some moguls under the sound of my voice right now. You're at a moment of decision. Oh, God, I feel it so strongly. In entertainment, because I'll tell you right now, entertainment needs new kings. You're not ready for that. You're not ready for that. You're not ready for that. In technology, technology needs new kings. Get to this altar. I'm going to pray. Something's going to fall on you. I'm telling you. Something's going to fall on you. Something's going to fall on you. A hundredfold. A hundredfold. Never look at who's in position. Never look at that. You ask the question, who's next? You don't invest in what is. You invest in what will be. Harvest is what will be. You invest for harvest. I'm telling you, there is an anointing in this room right now. I am over time, all this, but I came for you. There is an anointing in this room right now that will give you the strength to be who you're called to be, I feel God. And a hundredfold blessing. There are people right now that came up through this church that are sitting in high places and they love Jesus. They love Jesus. Get as close to this altar as you can. And all you have to do, see, I don't want you to, see, this is a moment like the rich young ruler had. He walked away sad when he could have walked away not only with the hundredfold, but more importantly, with himself. You don't ever want, the first person that you have to have integrity towards is you. Hello, somebody. You should be the first beneficiary of your integrity. Oh, God, I feel it. You need to prove to you that you have integrity. There's someone here, and you don't even trust you. Get to this altar, please. I, gotta, I, I can't do this forever, but if God is speaking to you, you say, I, I want to walk in ordered steps. I, I want to I walk in ordered steps. I want to walk in ordered steps. I know that my life is a strategy. I know that my life is a strategy, and I want to walk in the strategy of my life. Please, come get, get down here. Something's going to happen. See, you taking the step is your first ordered step. This is an opportunity for alignment. You taking the step is your first ordered step. Get as close as you can. As close as you can. Come on, close as you can. You get close to me. Come on, close as you can. Close, close as you can. I want you to be in the energy of this. Can he move through the pews? Yeah, but there's something about you getting out of your seat. Get out of your seat. Come close. Come close. Come close. I know what I'm talking about. I know what God sent me to say all of it but it all culminates in this moment your strategy God your strategy for my life your strategy your strategy your strategy father we thank you so much for this moment I thank you for your beloved sons and daughters in this house your children you love them so much gosh I feel your rich love for them you do know the plans you have for them and Father, I thank you right now that not only can I feel their love, but your love, your love for them is moving in their hearts right now. It's moving across their hearts. They're feeling it. Someone to break down. They've never felt love like this before. Just receive it. Some of you right now, you've never felt love before, but you feel something happening on your heart. You feel the touch of God on your heart right now. That's the love of God. That is God's love for you. He is into you. He is for you, and he knows you. Just open wide and receive that right there. Receive it right there. 
It's his love. Hallelujah. And God, we've heard your word, God, that our steps are ordered. Our steps are ordered. We're not random. We're not random. We are your strategy. We didn't even, we couldn't even get here without strategy. And your ordered steps, the steps that have been ordered for us, that have been set up for us, God, are the steps. It's the process to that strategy. It's the structure to that strategy so that ultimately the life that you envision can be the life that is manifest. God, we thank you that this life will not be a disappointment-free life, but even in the disappointment, there is an assurance, there is a guarantee that there's a strategy even in the midst of the pain that I am becoming. Everything that happens in me, to me, is happening for me because my steps have been ordered and there will never be a time where you have forsaken me. There will never be a time where you are not with me. There will never be a time and God serving you will pay off serving you will pay off it will pay off it will pay off it will pay off a hundredfold 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 a hundredfold a hundredfold wisdom revelation wisdom revelation strategy marakashiba hundredfold 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 you're next 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 hundredfold 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 yes you yes you yes you yes you yes you yes you Never the same again. Thank you, Jesus. Never the same again. You got a portion. You got a portion. The Father, we're trusting you. 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 La Havasaka. We're trusting you. We're trusting you. Our steps are ordered. 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 Yes. Our steps are ordered. Our steps. Allah Hashimadakota. Ordered steps. Hallelujah. Yeah. Ordered steps. Ordered steps. Salamakota. Ordered steps. Gold, 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 pure gold, pure gold, pure gold. Father. Father in this house, you're doing that which only you can do. Is shifting some things. There were some questions. How? What if I, if I do this? What? And I thank you, God, that you're breaking the questioning. There's something that happened recently. What we're done? Gosh, there's something that happened recently that you may have heard about. And some people laugh, but I think that God was in it. There was a young lady who was a dancer, and um, a video went viral of her falling from off the pole. You probably saw this. And uh, uh, it was an interesting video. And she falls off the pole, right? And she's on Wendy Williams' show. And it was kind of crazy because she had been asking God to get her out of it because she realized that it was beneath her, right? But sometimes you feel like you got to do what you got to do, right? And you don't have to do what you got to do. Not like that, but it feels like that. And I don't judge anybody that feels that way. But the, but the liar will. And she was praying like, God, this is, I, I know, this, I, there's more. 
and threw that thing, and she fell, and she got hurt, right? She fell. I thought that was kind of interesting. Though you fall. Though you fall. And long story short, uh, resources are coming to her. She's going to school. She's getting out of that, not going back to that again. The steps of a good man are ordered. Though you fall, you shall not utterly be cast down. That, that is a sign. You got to look at stuff. That's a sign. On her level, compromising, right? If she was asking God to get her out of it, that means that there was a part of her that says, this, ain't, this is not it. And you know, that wasn't the most ceremonious way to get out. But she got out. And I feel that for somebody in here right now. And you're afraid, who am I going to be and how am I going to eat and am I going to be accepted? Let me tell you something. If a person doesn't accept you because you love God, you were in the wrong relationship to start with. No fruit can come out of that. None. When I started walking with the Lord, it was painful. I'll tell you. I started walking with the Lord. This guy was my best friend. I mean, my best friend, right? And he just disappeared. And I wasn't even judgmental or anything. I was just, you know, I just, just started walking. And he just, he disappeared. But then I went back and I looked at what our relationship was based on. Clubbing and other stuff. And, <laughs> and so there was a connection, but the connection wasn't the type of connection that would bring out the best in me or him. What, what are you willing to let go of for your ordered steps, for the strategy, for the reason why you're here. I'm so proud of you. You came to this altar, you're going all the way. And we're going to lead you. We're going to guide you. And we're going to feed you. But most importantly, God says, I'll never forsake you. Nor will your seed beg bread. So, Father, I thank you. As your sons and daughters have said yes here in this moment, I thank you, God, that you're going to feed them. You're going to lead them. You're not going to leave them stuck. You're not going to start them on a journey and then abandon them. You're going to be with them in the high times and the low times. You're going to be a source of counsel and wisdom, encouragement, affirmation, and blessing. And I thank you, God, that there is a 100-fold anointing in this house right now, a 100-fold. And so whatever they have to shake or whatever shakes them because they said yes to you, I thank you that a 100-fold return will come to them. I thank you for ideas. I see creative strategies coming. I see them. God is handing them out right now. Creative strategies in technology, in marketing, and entertainment. So you got to remember, one idea. God is the God of ideas. God is the God of thoughts. One thought can change your whole life. One thought. So, God, I thank you that 100-fold is coming down. And not just in resources, in creativity, in relationships, in favor. Because they said, yes, honor. I thank you for the, honor this. I thank you for the testimonies that are coming. The testimonies. The testimonies are coming. They're coming. They're coming. Testimonies. Testimonies. Ideas. Ooh, Jesus. Christ of Nazareth. Books. Films, music, songs, businesses, apps, right here. Watch this. And there's something, watch this, I, it's in this house right now. And you catch it if it's for you. Something that there is not even a term for yet, God is giving. In this room right now. In this room right now. There's not even a term for it. We weren't calling them apps. What was a tweet? 20 years ago. What was a tweet 20 years ago? You receive that? I ain't making this up. I only say what I hear my father say. Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise God. Something is happening right here in this atmosphere. Right here in this atmosphere. Right here in this atmosphere, hundredfold, hundredfold, a hundredfold you, a hundredfold you. There's more to you. You are unfolding. You are unfolding. You are becoming more. You are becoming.
becoming greater. God kept some things from you because they would not match the manifold you. Wish you would catch what I just said. Oh, oh God. I'm trying to turn this thing off. God kept some things from you because you were sizing yourself up wrong. There are dimensions of you that were still waiting to unfold. And if you would have got what you asked for, you would have been unequally paired. You would have been unequally paired with the relationship. You would have been unequally paired with the opportunity. You had to be rejected. God had to say no. The door had to close because you were still unfolding. And the wrong alignments will hinder your folding process. Are you tracking with me? Will keep you folded when you're supposed to unfold three or four times, I see an acceleration of your unfolding, your unfolding, growth, pow, 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 pow. Repeat after me, Heavenly Father, I thank you for your love. I feel it. I thank you for your word. I receive it. I thank you for my ordered steps. I will pursue it. I thank you for Jesus. Thank you for making him who had no sin, all of mine, all of my weakness, all of my limitations, all of my shortcomings. You place in his body, nailed it to the cross and put it to death. And just as he was raised up, free and victorious, because I'm in him, I'm raised up too. And I will continue to rise, even from falls, from glory to glory. Now, God, I receive the 100-fold anointing that's in this mist. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody.